In the last video, we configured some switch ports to be in a couple different VLANs. We also configured one switch port to be in a voice VLAN, and we configured a trunk from S1 to S2. Now let's talk about the different types of VLANs. To start with, the default VLAN is VLAN 1. So all switch ports on a switch, when the switch is brand new, start off in VLAN 1. Every switch port's in VLAN 1. There's also a switched virtual interface, interface VLAN 1, where you can put an IP address on the switch if you want. But all the switch ports are in VLAN 1. Not only that, the data VLAN is also VLAN 1 to start with. And the data VLAN is the VLAN where the, that your users are sending their data on. So if all your PCs, let's say, are plugged into a switch and all the switch ports are in VLAN 1, well, then your data VLAN is VLAN 1 because that's the VLAN where your user traffic or end host devices are communicating on. Then the native VLAN 1. The native VLAN also starts out as VLAN 1. The native VLAN is used on trunks. And it's used so that when packets cross the trunk, if they're, if they're using the native VLAN, then the traffic remains untagged. It's untagged traffic crossing a trunk. Now, normally, when packets cross a trunk, they get tagged with an 802.1Q VLAN ID that identifies which VLAN they're part of. However, if they use the native VLAN, it's reserved for untagged traffic. So you might say, well, why would you want to send untagged traffic across a trunk since the tagging is used to identify which VLAN the traffic's on. And you're right, you wouldn't want to use the native VLAN. So a situation in which you might have untagged traffic crossing a trunk would be, let's say that this ethernet cable is not long enough to go from switch one to switch two. And so you put a hub to interconnect the two switches together. So now this switch connects to the hub and this hub connects to the switch. And then somebody for some unknown reason decides to put a PC on that hub and connect that PC to the hub. Well, in this case, you would have what you would call, let's see here if I can get this to work. In that case, you would have a PC connected to the hub. So when this PC talked and went across the the trunk and sent data across the trunk, it wouldn't have an 802.1Q VLAN ID because the hub can't add a tag to that packet. It's not able to, it's not smart enough to add a VLAN tag to the um, packets. So when the packet goes across the trunk, it's untagged. So the native VLAN was designed so the native VLAN was designed in that scenario when you when you could have untagged traffic so that it could cross the trunk and that when that when that packet crosses the trunk and is untagged where would you send it ultimately you would send it to any ports that would be configured for the native vlan you would send it to a port if you configured a port for native vlan then that's where it would go it would go for untagged traffic however best practice is is to not use the native VLAN, to stay away from the native VLAN, you wouldn't want that type of situation probably to begin with. So I'll just delete this. Okay, next, the management VLAN. The management VLAN also starts out in management VLAN 1 because there is a switched virtual interface, interface VLAN 1, which you can't delete, and it's the Default VLAN 1 has a switched virtual interface that's also not deletable, uh, and that's interface VLAN 1. And you can put an IP address on it. Now, whatever VLAN you end up creating a switched virtual interface for and putting an IP address on becomes the management VLAN. The management VLAN is the VLAN that you could use to manage the switch by entering its web interface over an IP address or SSHing into the switch or telnetting into the switch. It is the VLAN where the switch has an IP address and is used for managing. So we call that the management VLAN. And by default, the management VLAN is VLAN 1 just because there's an interface VLAN 1 on the switch. Now, it doesn't have an IP address to start with, but it could. All right, then the voice VLAN. The voice VLAN is unassigned to start with. It's not assigned to any VLAN in particular. But there is a voice VLAN, and when you configure a voice VLAN, it has a higher priority by default than other VLANs because it's meant to support voice traffic. 
then a black hole VLAN. A black hole VLAN is a VLAN that you would create and you would purposely leave unassigned. You would not assign it to any switch ports except for switch ports that go nowhere. So let's say you have unused switch ports and you want to make sure that if somebody plugs into that switch port that they don't end up on one of your networks, then you would assign that switch port maybe to your black hole VLAN which would be a VLAN to nowhere to keep users basically from entering the network accidentally. Then another important point about VLANs is that control plane information, protocols that communicate from switch to switch like CDP, DTP, VTP, PAGP, and LACP all communicate with their um, their hello messages and the way they communicate with each other from switch to switch, they communicate across VLAN 1. So a lot of control information is sent across VLAN 1. So given this, the fact that VLAN 1 is basically by default almost automatically assigned to all the different types of VLANs, best security practice dictates to move your VLANs away from VLAN 1. So over here in this plan, we make a VLAN 10 for students, a VLAN 20 for faculty, a VLAN 30 for human resources, and we move our data VLANs to different VLANs than VLAN 1. Then we make a VLAN 88 for the IT department, and maybe this is for the management VLAN, where the IT department manages the network. Then we make a VLAN 90, and we're going to assign it to the native VLAN, so that the native VLAN is, not, is no longer VLAN 1. And then we have a black hole VLAN and a voice VLAN. And you can see that the best practice dictates to move all those VLANs away from VLAN 1 into separate purposes uh, to serve different functions. Now, control, train, uh, control plane traffic will still cross VLAN 1, even if you remove VLAN 1 from the trunk. And that's what we're going to do now. We're going to add some additional configurations to the switches. We'll set up our native VLAN, we'll set up our management VLAN, we'll set up a black hole VLAN, and we'll configure those on the switches. I'm going to first move this up a little bit, and then I'm going to go down here and grab our administrator. Our administrator is going to be at 192.168.88.2, our IT administrator, and this administrator is going to need to be in the management VLAN or the IT department VLAN, VLAN 88. So the first thing I'll do is add a VLAN to our switch. So VLAN 88 name IT department. And I'm also going to need to add that to our other switch because it's going to need to be on both switch. And here it is. All right, so I've added a management VLAN, VLAN 88 IT department to both switches. And now I'll plug the switch in, uh, the PC into the switch. So the PC gets plugged into the switch and we're gonna choose a port. I'll choose port 24. So we're gonna need to put port 24 in the management VLAN. Also, we'll need to create an interface for um, a switched virtual interface for VLAN 88. So if we look, control C, at the configuration, you'll see if I go down towards the bottom of the configuration, there's an interface VLAN 1 where we put our IP address and it's shut down. We're going to create an interface VLAN 88 switched virtual interface, and that's where we'll put our IP address on the switch. So it's just as easy as saying interface VLAN 88. And now you have now you have a switched virtual interface. You just put in that command, then you put your IP address that you want for the switch. I'll just make one up here really quickly. Let's say we'll make the switch 88.2. And you don't even need to put a no shut command because unlike interface VLAN 1, which is shut down in the default configuration, when you create a new switch virtual interface, it goes up by default. And so now that we have this set up, we have basically, um, this is 
we now have a switched virtual interface. However, it's not activated until we have it on a switch port. And if we do a show VLAN brief, you'll see that if I stretch this out, it's easier to see. I'll stretch this out just a little bit. Here's our show VLAN brief. You can see we have a VLAN 1, 10, 20. There's 88 for IT department, but no switch ports are in there. So we need to put the switch port 24 in VLAN 88, but that's easy to do. We just go into that switch port and turn it into an access port first and then assign it to VLAN 88. So now switch port 24 is in VLAN 88 and so we should be able to reach that IP address from the IT computer. We'll fast forward time and we'll just test it out. We'll send a hello to the switch at 88.2. And there it is, we got replies. So it's working. Now I had already had the PC configured with the IP address and so that's why that worked. So now that takes care of our manage v management VLAN. Now what about our native VLAN? We're going to make our native VLAN VLAN 90. So once again, we'll go into the switch and we'll say, well, exit out of here, VLAN 90 name native. And I'll need to do the same thing on the other switch. But before I jump to the other switch, I'll just add this native VLAN to our trunk. So we configure the native VLAN on the trunk. We're not going to configure it on any switch ports because we don't want any users out here that are available for untagged traffic. We don't have a legacy switch that doesn't support 802.1Q tagging. We don't have a hub in between the trunk with a user on it. So really, we want to just move the native VLAN away from VLAN 1, but we will assign it to the trunk. We will say that the native VLAN is now VLAN 90, away from VLAN 1 as best security practice. So, interface gigabit 0 slash 1. The command to make the trunk was switch port mode trunk, just as a reminder. And then you say switch port trunk native VLAN 90. So that sets the native VLAN on the trunk. Also, we can say which VLANs are allowed across the trunk. So we could say switch port trunk allowed VLAN 10, 20, 88, which is our management VLAN. And now on our trunk, only VLANs 10, 20, and 88 will be allowed across the trunk. And we've effectively switched the native VLAN over to VLAN 90. All right, so now we'll go to the other switch and on the other switch, we'll notice that we're getting an error message. The spanning tree protocol received a, a bridge protocol data unit with an inconsistent peer VLAN ID 90. Now that's because the native VLAN on this side of the trunk is still VLAN 1, and on this trunk, it's now 90. So we have what's called a native VLAN mismatch. And this could take down your trunk. It could take down your network. So we're gonna need to quickly get this native VLAN mismatch, which was discovered by the Cisco Discovery Protocol, CDP, we'll get that taken care of. So we'll do that by saying VLAN 90, name native, and then we'll go into the gigabit 0 slash 1 port and put in the command, switch port trunk native VLAN 90, and we'll also you can see, there we go, unblocking uh, the consistency of the port. So the spanning tree protocol unblocked gigabit 01 on VLAN 1, port consistency restored, because now the native VLANs match on the trunk. So the commands once again for the trunk, switch port mode, ac uh, switch port mode trunk, and then switch port trunk native VLAN 90, and then we're going to limit which VLANs are allowed across the trunk. So switch port trunk allowed 
VLAN 10, which is a data VLAN, VLAN 20, data VLAN, and our management VLAN, VLAN 88. So there you have it. Oh, and also, wait a minute, what about our voice VLAN? VLAN 120. So I forgot about that. So we'll allow that one across too. And I'll go back to the other switch and I'll just add 120 also. Just putting in the command again overwrites and says these are the four VLANs across. Data, data, uh, management, IT department management, and the voice VLAN. And so now we've configured all of these. Now if we wanted to, we could go back in and create a VLAN 99, and then we would assign all of our unused switch ports to VLAN 99, and also shut down those unused switch ports. So for instance, if I go in and I say VLAN 99, name black hole, and you can see that we don't, we're not using let's say uh, ports one through four, fast ethernet one through four. Nobody's on fast ethernet one through four. So what we could do is, is we could say as a security measure, interface range, fast ethernet zero slash one through four, nobody's on those switch ports. We'll turn them into access ports, which is a good security practice to no longer have them in dynamic auto mode where they could automatically turn into a trunk and get access to all VLANs and also we could put it into VLAN 99 and now those ports are access ports they can't dynamically turn into trunks and they are in VLAN 99, which is a black hole VLAN, which essentially if someone was to jump on those ports, they would end up in VLAN 99, and VLAN 99 is not allowed across the trunk. So that's one element. The other thing, best practice would dictate maybe to shut down the port completely, and you could put a no negotiate to never negotiate to a trunk with a, another switch port. You could also put in the no negotiate command. And I forget if you need switch port no negotiate. Yes, the command is switch port no negotiate. All right, so those are a few commands that you can use to set up your different VLANs and then move the VLANs away from VLAN 1 and configure the VLANs on the switch.